uh, every other Sunday. So uh, uh, for me, uh, really, it is something that I subscribe to. Mm. I subscribe to that notion that we remain as such. That's right. Yeah. I want to ask President Kalava, you are in the opposition party. Yeah. Please enlighten me and enlighten the Kamne TV viewers. Does opposition mean opposing anything that the president or the ruling government is doing? What is your understanding? No, my my understanding, having been in government mm -hmm. before, uh, first of all, I was in opposition with President Sata mm -hmm. and came into a government. Mm -hmm. uh, for seven years, I was in government. Mm -hmm. And now I am uh, in the opposition. The role of the opposition and the role of the Democratic Party, the party that I lead, Mm. is basically to provide checks and balances. Mm -hmm. In a society like ours, which is uh, plural in nature, mm. it is important that checks and balances are, are, are pontificated. Mm -hmm. Because without that, then you have a, a monotype of governance where it is just one-sided, and uh, people need to see also the other side. Mm -hmm. If the government is trying to take us on the side of telling us that we all should believe that the problems we're having mm -hmm. is because of climate change, Mm. Then the opposition, an effective opposition, will say, no, 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 that is not true. Because climate change is not only in Zambia. Mm. We have got climate change in Saudi Arabia, and they are still growing things. We have got climate change in Doha, and they are still producing in London, in America. Mm. They are still producing, so we can't pile it only on climate change, as an example. Mm. Therefore, the role of the opposition, the Democratic mm. Party in particular, mm -hmm. is to be a watchdog, is to see that government... Uh, really is treating its people accordingly mm -hmm. and that people get their fair share of the of the governance uh, system that is being provided by the government of the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I am not an expert on climate change and don't, I would not like to blow my ignorance on climate change. But recently uh, the situation, because you see, as Kamna TV, we are spending now 950 kwacha every single day on petrol to run the station when Zesco power is not there. Like since morning to now, we haven't had the power. And I'm sure by the time we leave the studio, we'll still be on petrol. Now, I took offense uh, in one or two issues. And when I went to water and sewerage, uh, company, the MD there helped me a lot. And uh, the help was that um, I thought certain things are deliberate. Then the MD there, Mr. Jonathan something, he said, Pastor Chuluva, do you know in Lusaka we have 114 bohos to feed the people of uh, Lusaka, out of those, 12 are closed. And if we don't have the rains, we are going to shut some more. And there will be more short word, uh, I mean shortages in water. So 12 are closed. And we are just trusting God that water comes. Kariba is also affected. And everything, when he explained I felt sorry for water and sewerage. And I felt sorry also for Zesco. And I said to Jonathan that, you see, this is the problem that we have. As government, you don't explain to the people. So now, if there is no rain, as you have seen even some clips on Victoria Force, there is no rain. What will happen? somebody in the village or somebody in town may blame the government to say they are taking the economy back by not providing power. Now, how does that marry with governing of the nation where nature cannot even allow the ruling party, even if it's you, that would be in power? such things would happen. Uh, Pastor, I agree with you. To some extent, I agree with you that uh, uh, this is nature and it's difficult for, for anybody to politicize it or say anything beyond that. Mm -hmm. But here is the truth, uh, Pastor. Mm -hmm. The truth is that uh, 
uh, while we appreciate climate change, which mm -hmm. hasn't started today, this climate change notion has been around for years. Mm -hmm. It hasn't started in 2019 or 2017 or 2018. Mm -hmm. It has been around for the last decades. Mm -hmm. We know that uh, the world is becoming hotter and that we need to uh, begin regulating our, our environment, that the world is getting so polluted by these mushrooming of industries here and there, and we know who the pollutants are, that we know. Mm. From my experience as Minister of Lands and Environment, mm. I did attend uh, the AMSEN meetings. AMSEN meetings are basically meetings for Ministers of Environment. Mm. And we are grappling with this issue of climate change. Mm. And what every society now, or what every government is doing now, as a result of the challenges of the weather, because climate change is basically the weather, mm. is that... Like, for instance, for energy, they are now looking at other sources of energy, apart mm. from hydropower, which we have been doing from the time that when I was born, I found hydro, and we have failed to take advantage of wind-propelled power. Mm. We've got a lot of wind in this country. We've got a lot of sun in this country. We've got a lot of uh, biomass, which we can have in this country. Mm. Nuclear energy is now on the market, and yet we're not tapping in all those forms of energy. Mm. Zesco and the Ministry of Energy needed to begin thinking through those lines mm. and investing in that instead of spending 2.1 billion US dollars on lower Zambezi uh, to, I mean, lower Kafiwa there, where they want to be generating 700 megawatts of power when they already know that the water levels are going down. Mm. But Pastor, you know that climate change is not only that there is no rain. Mm. Climate change can also mean that there is rain from January to December. Mm. It can also mean that there are floods, not droughts. Mm. So climate change, you can't just say, no, with climate change, therefore, we don't have water. Because what will happen now is that maybe you're going to have a lot of rains that will start for seven, eight months. Mm. It's just raining. Mm. That's part of climate change. So the bottom line in all this is that we need to be proactive instead of being reactive. Mm -hmm. Harry Kalaba is president mm -hmm. of, of the Republic of Zambia. Mm -hmm. I would insist myself that we begin harvesting energy from coal. Mm. I would insist myself that we begin harvesting energy from nuclear power. Mm. I would insist myself that Zambia invests like Rwanda has done in solar energy. Mm. It is even cheaper. I would insist that we begin generating power from uh, other sources of energy like wind-propelled energy as opposed to hydropower. Many countries, Pastor, are moving away from hydropower, because first of all, it is expensive to maintain those turbines. Mm. And secondly, it's also unpredictable because you're supposed to depend on the volumes, huge volumes of water to make the turbines move. Mm. Now, things are changing, and when things change, you can't remain stagnant as a government. And that is why I don't agree with the way government is thinking. Mm. You know, this government has got a lot of alternatives that they could have used at their disposal. Mm -hmm. It is a question of priority, Pastor. Mm. It's a question of priority. How come this country, Pastor, is exporting power mm. to, to the DRC? Mm. How come we're exporting power with climate change? Mm. How come we're exporting power to South Africa? How come we're exporting power to other Sadiq countries when we are saying that we have got that climate change? Mm. Yes, Zambia is a signatory to the Sadiq power pool, mm. where Sadiq countries came together, I think it is in 2006, where they agreed that now we are going to be sharing power as we produce power within the Sadiq region. We need to share the power so that mm. all of us can move at the same pace. Mm -hmm. But then you, or you only give what you have. Mm -hmm. Right now we are in a power deficit as a country. We are having people in the compounds who are watching me, my fellow Christians. Mm. They are staying for about eight hours without power, 10 hours without power. The same challenge that Kamli TV is having of spending 950 kwacha is the same challenge that Harry Kalaba also is having. Mm. Because my genset has to run for 10 hours or so. And I've got my little daughter, Luce. When power goes, she starts crying. Mm. She doesn't want to be in the darkness. So we have to make sure that the genset has to run. And mm. for it to run, we have to spend a thousand kwacha every other day. Mm. Meaning that the cost of doing business now is becoming very extravagant. Mm. That can't continue. And we can't say government will not talk about you because there is climate change. I refuse to subscribe to that notion. Mm. The role of government is to provide leadership mm. in a crisis, in a moment such as this. Mm. That's why now you see that there is government. Where is government in all this? Mm. How can they cry wolf? And the, just this morning, I was telling somebody to say, you know, Magufuli in Tanzania, what he has done mm. is that as he's having power deficits in his country, 
he has also allowed himself to be having those same power deficits. So when power goes, you will hear the genset begins running. Then you'll say, oh, power has gone. But yes, it has gone. Then he understands that the Tanzanians are also now struggling at the same time with him. Mm -hmm. In this country, around woodlands, mm -hmm. we have got a different line. Minister's compound, the power doesn't go. Mm -hmm. Because they are using the state line, uh, the state house line. Power doesn't go. So we have leaders who don't even understand what power cut means. Mm -hmm. They don't understand what it means to go the whole day without your saloon working. They mm -hmm. don't understand what it means to stay the whole day without your garage working or your barbershop working. Mm -hmm. That is the problem. And so, for me, Pastor, yes, climate change is there. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have been attending the conference of parties, COP21, now we are at COP26, meaning that the world has acknowledged that we need to do something about the environment. Mm -hmm. But we can't use that as an escape route to say we should allow the status quo to continue. The water levels, yes, have plummeted. The big force has dried, yes. And we should have known when we've been allowing that water going in the Zambezi, joining into the Indian Ocean, mm. and goes to west. We should have known that there is a time. This uh, this uh, morning, I was reading the Bible with my wife, Irene. We were reading Ecclesiastes 3. Uh, and there, there was, there's a time for everything. We must know that at every particular time, life is seasonal. Mm. That is why... Uh, pastors like Pastor Chilova knew that at uh, some point we need cabinet, at some point we need to reserve this money for this, at some point we need to do this, because you need to save even for days that there will be nothing. There will mm. be days of plenty and there will be days when there will be, there'll be nothing. I think it's even in the Bible. So for me, we have a system, Pastor. I'm sorry to say, Pastor. Mm. We have a system that is reactive. Mm. It is not proactive. Mm. Same climate conditions, same climate change that we are having here is the same climate change that they have in South Africa. Mm. How come South Africa power is not going for eight hours? How come here it is going for 10 hours? Same uh, climate change that we have <coughs> is mm. the same in Rwanda. How come in Rwanda they don't have these power cuts? How come here the power cuts are not But uh, can it's I interject to President? Please, Pastor. Uh, you see, if I look at my neighbor, and I say, my neighbor has this, I don't have. That one has this, I don't have. Uh, are you suggesting that when my neighbor buys a car, I should buy a car? Not necessarily, Pastor. All I'm saying is that we should avoid comparing ourselves to failed states. We should, comp we should be an ambitious people. Mm. We should be a people that should be comparing ourselves to even countries like London and mm. the UK. We should be comparing ourselves to developed nations for us to reach a certain threshold. Mm. If we continue saying, no, but in the DRC, power goes for 12 hours. So what are you talking about? It's only eight hours. That is not being ambitious. Mm. Me being president, my comparisons must be how come in Australia, they are also having uh, climatic conditions that are quite severe. How mm. come in, uh, in Ireland, they are having climatic conditions that are severe. How come they have power throughout? Mm. How come they don't even have any shortages of, uh, of power? Mm. It's a question of being ambitious. It's a question of forward planning. It's a question of putting our money where it is required. Mm. Right now, Pastor, there's an extravagance of spending money where we don't need it. Mm. Just recently, Pastor, I'm sorry to submit, just recently, you saw, Pastor, that we're almost procuring a road contract of $1.2 billion, US dollars, the second dollar dual carriageway. Mm. Just recently, Pastor, we spent 42 million US dollars on procuring fire tenders on things that we never needed. Just recently, Pastor, we saw that we bought a jet costing 135 million dollars, which was transporting His Excellency the President from which is transporting the President from one place to another. Imagine for a second, Pastor, if that money was spent on solar. Imagine mm. if that money was spent on growing, on investing in biomass. Mm. This country can never lack those issues. Zambia is a blessed country. Mm. We have sufficient uh, elders of the land in this country. Mm. I'm talking to one who stand in the gap and pray for this country. And the Lord hears the prayers. He has given us everything that we need. Mm -hmm. The only thing that we don't have currently is leadership. Mm. Only that. President, let me put you on the spot. Um, 
Apparently, though I've not been in politics, uh, by the special grace of God, I started dealing with His Excellency, President of the Republic of Zambia, our first founding president, Dr. Kenneth Kaunda, in 1980. But 1989, when he invited me to go to State House, I didn't feel the grace to go there. Now, when MMD was being formed, I asked, if you remember, I preached a message from uh, um, Ivalinon College when my wife sang that song, Umwa Umepava Umeni Yesu, and Zambia is our territory. The moment I finished preaching that, President Sata located me. I was staying in uh, Avondale at the seventh quarter. But all the monies that God was blessing my wife and I, we felt the gospel must be preached. And I issued a statement before MMD came into power. I said, without God, and I still have those pneumatic tapes, those ones, and someday I will play on the cabinet so that people may see and judge my statements. I said, Without God, no matter how educated you are, no matter how rich you are, you cannot fix the economy of the nation. And there I went wrong in the eyes of my president, Sata. The following day, he came at my house. I don't know how he located. That man had information. <laughs> Found my house, came with journalists, and he asked my wife to say, where is Pastor Chilwa? Get him out of the house. I want to interview him. And you remember, in counter time, no one was on TV. We started the TV, then my brother, Nevers, the two of us were on TV. So at that time, and twice I did it, we blocked all the communication channels in Zambia. People who didn't like me on TV, they went to radio, they found me, they went to Radio 2, they found me everywhere. And that's what offended my late President Sata. May so rest in peace. And he came and he asked my wife and said, get him out. Where can he get this money from and who is sponsoring him? And of course there was rumor that I'm being sponsored by Kaunda. But that aside... When I came home, my wife said, President Sato was here looking for you for the statement you made. The following day, Honorable, I went to his office. I said, President, uh, Mr. Sata, you wanted to see me. He says, where did you get that money? I explained. And then he said, um, how can you say that uh, even if MMD comes into power, they can't fix the economy? I said, sir, if you heard my transmission, I said, without God, don't be cheated. Politicians are like prostitutes. Without God, they are just interested for a vote. They are just interested in this full of lies. So anybody who comes and says, I'm educated, I can do this, I can do this, it's a lie. Involve God because the Bible says, without me, you can do nothing. Fact, that's true. That's the mistake I made, and I continue making in this nation by saying, no matter how educated you are, President Kalava, no matter which president will come, without God, I'll still insist, you cannot rule the nation correctly. And that's why I played that tape to President Chiluba when he realized. He had his own mistakes. We agree. But he said, Father, help me. Yes. <clears throat> now, here is the deal. The two ministers that uh, also confronted me, they said to me, the late uh, Kafumukache, you remember? Yes. Patrick Kafumukache. And Ronald Penza. We were in uh, Penza's office. May their souls rest in peace. Three years after they are being in power, 
I said, Honorable, are you fixing the economy? Is the millimeter coming down and everything that you campaigned? Here's what they said. You cannot tell lies against the dead. They said, you know, Pastor Chiruba, uh, theory and the practical are two different things. We are still finding our feet to balance the economy. Now, if uh, you remember, President, to me, I think one of the best and brilliant cabinet that has ever been formed in this uh, nation was that of President that you And I've just lived a little bit longer enough to know that man cannot be pleased. Mm. No matter, even in church, you pray for the sick, you feed them, uh, you pray, receive Jesus, the power of God. Tomorrow they say, idiot, crucify him, give us Barnabas. That is just man. So, climate change aside, and all this aside, what is it that on the plate so when I come? Mm. Uh, Pastor, you have, you have been a part of this country. You, and uh, I don't think anybody will write the history of this country without mentioning Pastor Chuluba mm. anywhere. Uh, the psalmists in uh, 127, the psalmist says, unless the Lord builds a house, mm. Those that build will build it, but to be in vain. Mm. And unless the Lord watches over the city, the mm. watchman will watch, but it will be in vain. You are right. Mm. Completely right. And that is why I was agreeing with the covenant that Chilwa entered into. Mm. This country, unless we subject it to the Lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ, mm. we cannot reach the fulfillment that we are looking for. Because mm. we are all bound by human credit. My own ingenuity, my own efforts can't take us there unless the Lord is involved. And so the basis of all this, that's why for me, the basis of all this mm. has to be Christ. Mm. Even with the wisdom that I have, the church has to have its rightful place mm. in this nation. Without that pastor, you are right. We'll grapple in the dark. We'll borrow macroeconomic policies from the east, from the west, from the south. When we bring it here, it will not work. Mm. We need to do that which we ought to do first, mm. especially that we have entered into a covenant. Mm. We have to remember the words of the psalmist, mm. as he says it in 127. And then we are strengthened because we are told, uh, when we begin facing challenges, again, the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah 40, verse 31, he tells us that those who trust, who put their trust in the Lord, you know, will have their strength renewed. You know, they mm. will they'll mount up wings like eagles. Mm. They will uh, they will run and never grow weary, walk but never faint. So once the basis is solid, once the basis is that of Christ, then we will know where to go when we have got challenges. Mm. Because currently, God has been substituted. Mm. God is absent in all this. We use the, mm. the we use the name of the Lord in vain in this country. Mm. We use the name of the Lord in vain in this country mm -hmm. to get political mileage. Mm -hmm. But to walk the walk with the Lord, mm. Mm -mm. it is not happening. It's not happening, Pastor. And I know, Pastor, deep down your heart of hearts, you know that. That's not happening. And that is where Zambia has gone wrong. You can't enter into a covenant with the Lord mm. on one hand. And on the other hand, you want to do other things and you expect to succeed. Mm. When I become president, Zambia is going back mm. on that path. We have to acknowledge that there's a covenant in this nation. Mm. We have to know that unless we walk that path of Christ, the path of righteousness, whatever we do will be in vain. Mm. Again, reading Ecclesiastes 9 verse 11 this morning, you know, time and chance happens to them all. Mm. If we can put and anchor our faith in the Lord, pastor, it will be done. Because re relying on my own human friend, mm. no matter how good the cabinet can be, mm. no matter how good we can be, Mm. The Lord is absent. Mm. Development is absent. My president, let me say this. Uh, you see, I want to make a statement here. You see, if there is one thing that uh, the crime I've committed in this nation or however commit is not to go around the bush. And uh, when I say going around the bush, are you agreeing with me that, especially here in Zambia, 
the politics we do, to some extent, they are that of poverty. Mm-hmm. Because some of the people, from time in memory, I'm not just talking about this government, I've been observing these trends. There are politics of poverty. We don't go to save the people. We go to enrich ourselves. Exactly. I agree. Not to save the people. I agree, Pastor. When we are in the opposition, we can tell anybody nice things, nice words, but when we get there, it becomes a different ball game. This has puzzled me. What can you say to that? Because today you and I are sitting like this. Tomorrow, I'm not saying that you you should say prophetically, Pastor Comfort, <laughs> that I will be president. But you can give me the prophets. I'll take it. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tomorrow, today we are sitting like this. When you become president, what makes people change that uh, from nowhere, you are Duanuka, you have 15 within two years because you are minister. Mm. You have 25, you have a farm there, you are doing that road there. And you see the blind part of it. My mother, let me speak in Bemba, uh, she taught me well with my father. She said, Mwanawandi ichifulo chifimba pamenso. Chifulo chisuma. Chifimba pamenso. When you are there as a minister, PS, president, vice president, even when somebody is telling you there is a ditch there, you think you can jump over it because of the position. What makes people go that way? Pastor, it's a very profound question you've asked, and it sorts right in my shoes. Because remember, Pastor, that I was not fired mm. as Minister of Foreign Affairs. Mm. It's one of the most senior positions in government. Mm. And uh, even when I resigned, I must tell uh, you here on Camden TV mm. that there were efforts by the president to ask me to rescind my decision mm. of resigning. I Meaning that uh, there are still remnants of people in this nation mm. that can still stand for the truth. Mm. And uh, Pastor, when I say I'm a Christian, I'm not just a Christian on paper. I, I try to live. Mm. Of course, I'm bound by human frailty like everybody else. Mm. But I try to be truthful to myself. And uh, to have left for me a position of foreign minister. with uh, the, the foreign minister, by the way, Pastor, is the only minister mm. who has, uh, besides other vehicles they give ministers, is also given a Benz. And I was the only one who had a Benz among the ministers. But I still said I'm going to leave this because I was not at peace mm. with it. I didn't join politics in 2007 because I wanted to become rich or to enrich myself and my family. I joined politics talking for myself because I thought that I could use politics as an avenue to save. I wanted to become a priest because I thought being a priest I would save much more in the community. Can I interrupt that right there, to, yeah. my president? Where do you get the money for a campaign? Because this is a very expensive exercise. And when people are in the opposition, that's when they say, oh, the country, big money there, big money that side, big money. When they go into power, they are bound by those covenants, including satanic covenants, and they are bound to repay that. Where do you get the money to sustain your campaign as president? Okay, well, uh, before I answer, can I finish the, phase, uh, the earlier argument, Pastor? So I was Please saying that it is true that some people go into leadership because they want to amass wealth. Mm. And most of the leaders that we have today, especially in the PF, mm. are there, Pastor, and I speak in front of God, I'm, I'm speaking before a pastor here, that most of the leaders we have there, are there, they are in it for themselves. It's got nothing to do with the people of Zambia. And when I saw that myself, that it's just about them and themselves, I said I was out of place. I can't continue because I know myself from history that we had Burying my young brother side, I know. Again, I come. From... Well, so I don't know when I'll die. 
Mm. But one thing I've told myself and my God is that for as long as I live, mm. I will try to do the best to live truthfully, to mm. live a life that is liberated, mm. so that when I die tomorrow, my children can walk the streets of Zambia, mm. head high, knowing that their father lived a life that was at least pontificated. Mm. Coming to your question, are you getting money? Pastor, you'll be surprised. Mm. That the people that sponsor our campaigns are ordinary Zambians mm. that give a 20 kwacha, received a prophecy from Pastor Chiloba. Mm. It's not because there is Prophet Blaze has given me a prophecy or Prophet Bushir has given me a prophecy. It is because, first of all, I feel it in my spirit. Mm. I know the support that we are getting from the ordinary Zambians. They buy talk time for me. As I was coming here, somebody just put a 20 kwacha of air. I think that's where now I'm differing, uh, President. Uh, sorry to say this. It is well. It is well. Um, this is where I'm differing. You see, one, as politicians in Zambia, let me say here, we don't tend to trust God that God is able to give us grace to have financial muscle. I'll tell you something. Look at people like George Bush. Look at people like Trump. Our friends in politics there, some of them, they don't chance presidency. You don't just wake up and say, MP waku, waku malole. They are drilled from the time they were boys. You'll be a president, you'll be a prime minister. And their parents start storing up there. Now, those people who give you 20 kwacha talk time, but even ever case some call and that nine and therefore a moon to make us trade. No, but pastor, those people who do the, wait a minute, President. I'm not stopping you, Pastor, but just yeah. before you continue, I'm sorry, I shouldn't mm. do this to a pastor. But it's just that the provision of the Lord mm. is not done in a vacuum. Mm. God's infinite wisdom, mm. God's infinite mercies, and God's mm. infinite hand reaches me through various uh, avenues. And mm. one of the avenues is that is through that same old woman or through that same uh, poor civil servant who gives you a 20 order to say, all I want to see myself is that I want to see a Zambia where we can have a leadership mm. that is true to the people of Zambia. Yeah, but what I'm saying, uh, President, is this. When I speak this, I'm speaking from the knowledge. There are people who come to say, you know, I helped that president. Not just President Lungu. Like I said, I started with President Kaunda in 1989. And all these presidents, on a personal level, I've saved them one-on-one. -on -one. But you find that there are some people that still would insult. The reason why people even form opposition uh, parties or what, it's when you have no place in here. You go out and you start attacking now. Given a chance to be there, I'm not talking about you or whatever. No, I'm saying that there is something in Africa which we should do away with. Mm. And that is to make covenants with people or to go, like I said, I'm not talking about you. I'm not talking about anyone there, but I'm speaking generally in Africa. People get money. They get this, and then they say, when I become president, I'll do this. I'll do this. I think that, to me, is satanic of the highest order. Yeah. Because that simply means the person of caliber you could have sent to Brazil, you as Minister of Foreign Affairs, because he gave you something, you are going to send a riffraff to go there who doesn't know. And those are the things that I'm saying. I think this is taking Africa back. No, Pastor, you are right. Pastor, you are right. And you see, like, where we are right now, this country is basically mortgaged. Mm. This country is basically mortgaged to the highest bidder. Today, as you and I speak, Pastor, this country has no... We don't even have a country, even as we sit here. We don't even have a leadership, even as we speak here. Mm. Because the country has been given. We are now a province of China, even as we speak here. Mm. Because those are the ones that help the leadership to be where they are today. And you are right, Pastor, when you say that those are the things that we should fight. And that is why, for me, even in my poverty, I would rather 
not go to the highest bidder. I would rather not go to those that have got deep pockets mm. to support my campaign so that I can print t-shirts, I can print this and that. Because at the end of the day, it is Zambia sovereignty that will be on trial. And so I have said for me, the Lord, we read scripture, that the Lord can do wonders. The Lord can bless people in various ways and forms. Mm. And for me, that story is true with me. Mm. The Lord has sustained me this far. Just the other day, I was telling my wife, Irene, I was telling her, you know what? I don't even know how we have managed to go through this year. Mm. Have all these meetings we have had and uh, and just succeed in the way we have succeeded. Mm. You know, it can only be God. So yes, Pastor, God has to be at the center of whatever we do. But I can assure you here on Camnet TV, Pastor, mm. that if there is one that is going to protect the sovereignty of this country, Mm. One that will side with the poorest of the poor in this country. Mm. One that will call sin by its rightful name. You are just talking to one as at this evening. That's what I'll stand for. Uh, it is for that reason, Pastor. Yeah. If I wanted money as mm. an individual, if really it was money I wanted, I would have not stopped my being member of parliament before getting the gratuity, which the MPs got the other day. Mm. I would have said, I'll wait. And get my graduate. Mm. But I know that even in poverty, there is dignity. Mm. I also know that money has got value, but we have given it value it doesn't have. Mm. And therefore, I had to walk away and say, if this is what the Lord has said, I would rather take the path of the Lord than the path of Mammon. We are going to take a break, uh, President Kalava. Uh, but before we take a break, yes, I want to ask a a question. You said you are a Christian. Have you called on President uh, Lungu to say, my brother, not as an opposition, my brother, for the sake of before I become president, because we don't know in 2021 who becomes president. president. For me, as a pastor, I understand very well from scripture that God has the times and seasons for each one of us. Exactly, it's sweet. It's clear. So, when I look at that, the heart of a king is in the hands of a... Of God. Yeah. Now, before we go there, before you become president, before you do this, All the leaders of the opposition, as well as President Lungwe, if you'll be if you if you'll be willing to meet me, Can. Uh, because I believe that uh, we need to begin reaching out. Mm. Having different views in politics doesn't mean that we are enemies. Mm. We are not. We are not as divided as our politics suggests. Now you are coming on my platform, President Kalaba, because as a Christian, uh, if you can't say to your brother whom you see that I love you, I forgive you. How? Uh, President Kalaba, I speak as a pastor. If there is not going to be unity of purpose to begin with, 
this country will be called, called a failed state because if, okay, you win President Lungu against his will, you win President uh, HH against his will, those people will still rise and find faults in you and they will still attack you. You can't govern this. Now the Bible says you reap what you sow. My appeal, and this is why I've been saying 2021, the Church of Jesus Christ should ask, who is your pastor? What do you believe in this? If anybody does not believe in God, stop dancing over fitenges, over soap, over this. It should not be. It's true, pastor. We should be able to say, look, let's sit down. There is corruption here, there is this here, let's sort it out. And it's you leaders that should be able to make. And we as clergy will follow you, will pray for you, will support and you. Pastor, I agree with you. I totally agree with you. If you followed my politics, Pastor, mm. I have said uh, time without number. I have said that I will never insult President Lungo. Mm. I have said I will never insult President Akainde Hichilema or President mm. Kambuili or any of my other... Uh, competitors. I will mm. never do that because, uh, first of all, it will not even show who, who really I am as a mm. Christian. And then secondly, we have to change the politics in this country. We have called each other names a lot. Mm. The fact that I don't agree with President Long, and we have not differed with President Long. Mm. I just didn't agree with his way of governance. Mm. I just didn't agree that he, will, he liked more Chinese than mm. the ordinary people. That's why I left. So it doesn't mean that now because of that Harry Kalama becomes president mm. because in that way other leaders will feel respected and I also expect them to reciprocate mm. the same gesture that I'm advancing towards them mm. and when you look at the race I seem to be the youngest mm. of them all and so I have got an obligation myself mm. even culturally how pastor, old are you I am 43 years old oh congratulations thank you <laughs> you'll find us <laughs> yes yeah so I have an obligation mm. President Lungu is not only head of state of this country, he's also older than me by 20 years. Mm. And so I should respect him as such. Mm. Mr. Hakainde Ichilema is older than me mm. by 15, 16 years. So mm. I will respect him as such. And so I find no reason why I should begin calling them names. Mm. But when it comes to issues of national importance, issues of development, mm. where I'm going to speak what I think should be done. Mm. Because at the end of the day, what is at stake are the people of Zambia mm. who have been used as pawns in this game mm. where politicians are the only ones winning mm. and the people keep losing. That I have said we have to exchange now. It is high time the ordinary Zambians out there also won, mm. at least for the first time. And I want to believe it will be under my presidency. I'll come back to that. Uh, uh, thank God that uh, I had this opportunity with you. Uh, let me say this as we take the break. President uh, Kalaba, be the first to call HH, to call President Lungu, to call Nevers, to call this. Please sit down. I'm appealing as a pastor. Because if you people get divided, your people will be buying pangas in 2021. Pastor, but if you sit down together like we are sitting, it is easy. I haven't insulted you. Why should your cadres come and beat me up? We are talking here mutually. So if you you sit down with President Lungu, when you said there are there are people who are amassing wealth who are there, I wanted to say mention their names. Now I realize they will still come net and I don't have money. <laughs> <laughs> You and I will start frequenting the court. <laughs> but <laughs> when... Pastor, before we go on break, I wanted to say... Yeah, let me finish this. Advising, yeah. uh, when I resigned as foreign minister, mm. uh, President Hakainde Hichilem, I hope he's watching me, 
Mm. He said he wanted to come and see me home. And mm. then I said, no, sir. Let me be the one to come and see you. Mm. Let me follow you, not you following me. Mm. Uh, culturally, you are older than me. Mm. Let me follow you. So he's, we agreed that we meet at a place that was neutral. Uh, President Nevers Mumba himself, mm. he also called me. And uh, I said, no, uh, Pastor, I have to follow you. Mm. Uh, especially you, that you are also a man of the cloth. Let me come. Mm. And I followed him home. So for me... So the only one you haven't called is President Lunga? No, because President Lunga just walked out on him that time. So it, mm. was, it was not going to work that I should uh, call him. And uh, I'm sure he was still raging within himself. He felt disappointed with me. He thought I was as power hungry and that kind of thing. Mm. But you see, maybe he needs to read scripture more and you'll understand that. Life no, no, no. Me. It is you that is to go back and say, my brother, if I have offended you, the reason why, and this is the point I wanted to say, that you could have gone there if you have evidence that Pastor Chiruba has taken this road to himself. Pastor Chiruba bought three fire tenders and you have evidence. You go to President Lungu but when I and was say, minister, I used to tell him, and say this one and this one and this one. Then you put the evidence there and you know, I look forward to a time, I must say this, even those Anichi Fumbula, is she still the, the Auditor no, General? The former Auditor General. The former she Auditor resigned. General. All those reports, I look forward for people to be prosecuted for some mischiefs that have gone there. It is only you leaders when you come together. As pastors, we've got our own issues also. The way I preach may offend somebody. The way somebody preaches may offend me. We've got our own issues. Mm -hmm. But that should not stop me to greet some pastor from Seventh Day right. or from Baptist. That's being evil. And even you, your calling is politics. Now, that's why you abandoned the seminary <laughs> to come and uh, try and be president here. So since that is your calling, you are supposed to initiate. I am appealing to you. President Kalaba. Thank you, Pastor. And uh, as I appeal to you, you know 18th of October was declared day of, day of prayer and fasting. Yes, Pastor. Are you against that declaration? The declaration itself is innocent. Are you coming for prayers? Uh, I do my own prayers. Uh, no, actually, even as I'm, I'm saying... Pastor, I'm still fasting even now. You and I are fasting. Let's yeah. not blow you there. Yes. I'm <laughs> saying, are you coming? I want to see you. To come I to want the National to House see... of Prayer? Not to the National House of Prayer, wherever it will be. Are you coming that we pray together? You are not coming for Lungu. You are not coming for HH. You are not coming for anybody. I am saying, like no, I said. I've got a way, Pastor. I've got a way I celebrate or I do my prayers on that day. So you are Even saying. Even when I was foreign minister, because I must admit, Pastor, that I have, I, 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 in my own thinking, I've always said. A day like this, I would rather spend it with a downtrodden, and so I go and uh, be with them. So you okay, don't want to come and day agree day. with me and say, let's pursue this, so that you and I as national leaders, you don't want it's to... It's not about me physically being there, spiritually we will agree, and what is agreed in the spiritual realm, it's also agreed in the mm -mm. physical You are being an intellectual president. No, I'm just saying... Me, that. I am saying, yeah. I want to see, not because I'm God, I want to see you come there, President Shimbakambwiri, come there, HH, come there, not involving God, I mean, president and politics, not bringing such things. But we sit down as people of God, as a nation, even Nineveh came together. When we come together as people of God, uh, Chronicles, Second Chronicles chapter 14, 7 verse 14, you know that we have to come together and call on the name of the Lord. I'm just appealing as a body of Christ, not necessarily on the party lines. And we are not coming as hypocrites to pray. I know it's just one day we meet like we are meeting in the studio and pray together. Are you coming? Uh, Pastor, I'll have to look at uh, the programs that were already set in motion, but with this invitation... I'll wait for you. Yeah, yes, Pastor. I will definitely call. I'll wait for you. I'll, I'll definitely call, Pastor. Let's take a break. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> Amen. <laughs>